Good afternoon. I'm delighted today to present our work on using genome scale CRISPR screens to discover a synthetic lethal interaction between the amplification of the cyclin one gene and the gene encoding the pk one kinase. First, let me introduce you to the concept of synthetic lethality. While synthetic lethality is a type of genetic interaction uh, that is defined when two mutations are combined and are cause uh, cellular or organismal lethality. The attraction in oncology is to recapitulate synthetic lethal interactions using uh, small molecules or inhibitors. And to illustrate this point, consider this example here, where the A and B genes display synthetic lethal interactions. In this situation, uh, the gene A is mutated specifically in a tumor. So if you want to explore the concept of synthetic lethality, what we have to do is to develop inhibitors of uh, the protein encoding uh, by a gene B to really recapitulate this genetic interaction. And if we were able to do so, we would induce uh, specifically tumor uh, cell lethality. This is the concept that is being exploited by PARP inhibitors to target HR deficiency in tumors. Obviously, the challenge now for the field is to discover new synthetic, synthetic lethal interactions that can be exploited for therapeutic purposes. And one such uh, uh, genetic alterations that we think is uh, very uh, tractable for uh, synthetic lethal, uh, synthetic lethal based therapies is the amplification of cyclin one gene. So cyclin one gene amplification is found in multiple tumor types, including breast cancer, where it's associated uh, with poor prognosis and chemo resistance. We think it is tractable for synthetic lethal approaches because there are consequences uh, for, uh, uh, associated with cyclin one amplification. This is because the cyclin one protein acts as a, uh, uh, the cognate cyclin for the CDK2 kinase, which is a key uh, kinase for the transition uh, between the G1 and S phases of the cell cycle. So in conditions or in tumors or in cells that overexpress or have amplified the, the cyclin E1 gene, the uh, overproduction of cyclin E uh, causes activation of CDK2, which provokes an uh, unscheduled or premature entry into S phase. This is associated with problems with the interplication, also known as the interplication stress, and it's also associated uh, with uh, genome instability. And it's really uh, this genome instability that we're aiming uh, to target using synthetic lethality. So to discover these interactions, uh, we uh, opted to do uh, CRISPR-Cas9 screens. And the way we do our CRISPR-Cas9 screens is with isogenic sets of cell lines. And to develop a cell line that uh, basically has hallmarks of cyclin one amplifications, uh, we introduce multiple copies of the cyclin one genes, uh, cyclin one gene using uh, piggyback transgenesis. The, the cell lines that arose from this exercise uh, display many of the hallmarks of cyclin one gene amplification, including premature entry to S phase and data replication stress as evidenced by phosphorylation of the check one kinase and also other phenotypes that are described uh, uh, in our uh, uh, preprint uh, describing this interaction. Using these cell lines, we undertook either in my lab or at uh, Repair Therapeutics multiple uh, genome scale or CRISPR screens. And uh, there were about 10 genes that really were robust uh, synthetic lethal interactors uh, with cyclin one amplification. In other words, that were selectively essential in cell lines that displayed high levels of cyclin These genes are depicted here, and many of them are associated either with genome stability or progression uh, through the cell cycle. To identify which genes we should work on, we decided to mine uh, the dependency map data or the depth map data. This is a collection of genome scales CRISPR screens, this case in tumor-derived cell lines. So we asked a question in this data, which, is the, which are the genes that are selectively essential in cell lines with high cyclin E1 level? And this exercise uh, identified, in addition to our positive control, cyclin E and CDK2, a gene here, uh, PKMIT1. So PKMIT1 also was a very strong hit in our isogenic uh, screens. And PK11 was also uh, very attractive because it encodes a protein kinase, a druggable enzyme class. So PK MIT1 or MIT1 is a protein kinase that acts as a selective inhibitor of the CDK1 kinase. In other words, PK MIT1 is a break that prevents unscheduled CDK1 activity during the cell cycle. 
It is related to another kinase, which is a little bit uh, better known, which is the we one kinase, but differs from we one at a number of levels. First of all, PKMA1, unlike we one is selective for CDK1. We one inhibits and phosphorylates CDK1 and CDK2. Furthermore, PKMA1 is associated uh, is basically cytoplasmic associated with endomembranes in, in the cytoplasm. And we think this is important because CDK1 and cyclin B accumulates in the cytoplasm first uh, uh, before being activated and translocated into the nucleus. So uh, we validated that uh, PKMIT1 really does display uh, uh, a synthetic lethal interaction with cyclin E1 cells. In other words, loss of PKMIT1 causes lethality in cyclin E1 uh, high cells. And uh, basically, we validated that uh, this uh, uh, requirement for PKMIT1 activity in cyclin E1 uh, high cells required the, the catalytic activity of PKMIT1. So this really set the stage for the development of inhibitors that target PKMIT1. But at the time of this study, there was no such inhibitors available. So our colleagues at Repair Therapeutics developed a highly potent and a highly selective PKMIT1 uh, called RP6306. RP6306, as uh, uh, in addition to uh, being very potent and highly selective, has a PK properties that makes it an orally bioavailable uh, inhibitors of PKMIT1. And uh, uh, this inhibitor is currently in clinical development, and you'll, he you'll hear more about it uh, from the presentation of Dr. Tim Yap. So treatment of cells that have high levels of cyclin E, in this case, a fallopian tube model uh, developed by Ronnie Drapkin, uh, really recapitulates also the genetic interaction between PKMIT1 and cyclin E1 uh, 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 overexpression, as you can see here. Uh, treatment of normal uh, uh, fallopian tube uh, cells with uh, RP6306 is pretty much innocuous, uh, but is highly cytotoxic in the conditions where cyclin E1 is overexpressed. So uh, uh, this uh, lethality uh, caused by RP6306 is also recapitulated in tumor-derived cell lines that have cyclin E1 amplification. So our task uh, for the next few slides uh, was to uh, try to understand the mechanism underlying the synthetic lethality between PKMIT1 and cyclin E1 gene amplification. And our hypothesis was there was somehow a critical dependency on PKMIT1 to restrict the activity of CDK1 cyclin B to avoid catastrophic DNA damage due to an unscheduled entry into mitosis. So we tested uh, this hypothesis uh, using a number of assays and I'll only summarize a few in the next few slides. So first we ask the question, is CDK1 activated by RP6306? And this is because PKMIT1 is an inhibitor of CDK1 activity. So uh, to do so, we uh, use immunofluorescence uh, and look at uh, the phosphorylation of serine 126 on cyclin B, which is a notophosphorylation site uh, of the CDK1 cyclin B complex. What we observed here was very clear uh, after activation of uh, CDK1 in replicating cells, okay? And this is not normal. Usually CDK1 activation is done in late G2 early mitosis. So in other words, what we're showing here is that PKMA1 inhibition activates CDK1, but strangely enough, it only does so in cyclin E1 high cells, in cyclin E1 overexpressing cells. Associated with this, we also see evidence of unscheduled mitotic entry in replicating cells. And we see that uh, using two uh, or multiple uh, markers of mitotic entry, uh, namely here, uh, histone H3 phosphorylation and laminase C phosphorylation. And again, what the, the pattern we're seeing here is that PKMIT1 inhibition triggered this uh, unscheduled mitotic entry only in the cyclin D1 high cells. Thirdly, uh, uh, this unscheduled mitotic entry does, does have consequences for genome stability because we see actually evidence of a really catastrophic DNA damage. We can de detect this DNA damage by monitoring phosphorylation of histone H2AX, which is a common marker of DNA damage. And we see also, uh, before I go to the next slide, I need to show that, that actually this phenomenon is not only limited to our engineered cell lines, we also see this in tumor-derived cyclin amplified cell lines, 
But this DE damage also uh, can be seen uh, pretty clearly if one does uh, metaphase uh, spreads of our, uh, of our cells treated with uh, pk one inhibitor. As you see here, uh, we see a phenotype uh, called uh, chromosome pulverization, uh, which is a situation uh, that is very characteristic of premature metotic entry in, uh, in cells that are replicating DNA. And again, we see this phenotype only upon pk one inhibition and only in cyclin E-high cells. Importantly, we then tested whether this phenotype was dependent on the activity of CDK1. So this actually is a prediction of our model. And to do so, we dampened CDK1 activity by depleting uh, cyclin B uh, using siRNA. Uh, and in this condition, what we can see is that we can completely uh, 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 dampen or uh, uh, the formation of DNA damage uh, caused by pk one inhibition. So in summary, uh, our working model is that uh, cyclin E-high cells have a, a really increased dependence on the pk one driven inhibition of CDK1 activity and does so uh, to prevent a premature uh, entry into mitosis, uh, which uh, would be accompanied with catastrophic DNA damage and cell death. Having really established the mechanism of this genetic interaction, uh, uh, we then looked at uh, tumor uh, models to see if uh, pk one inhibition has single agent activity. We've done uh, here uh, shown is a tumor xenograft model uh, with OFCAR3, which is a cyclin E1 amplified uh, cell line. And uh, RP6306 has very clear, very profound uh, single agent activity uh, in the system. However, it does not cause uh, tumor regression. And uh, we reason that it might be possible uh, to uh, improve uh, the activity of RP6306 by inducing low level of DNA damage. And we've done this using a number of strategies. But the strategy I'm showing you here is by using gemcitabine, which is a nucleoside analog, uh, uh, which is also used in therapy. So when we combine low dose gemcitabine and RP6206 uh, in the same model as shown on the left, we're able to induce very profound tumor regression in this model. I think this is really setting the stage for uh, investigating uh, the uh, impact of RP6306 as a single agent, but also in combination with a variety of the replication uh, uh, inhibitors or modulators. So what I've showed you today is that we use a, a genome scale CRISPR screen uh, to discover a very uh, robust and penetrant uh, genetic interaction between pk one and cyclin one gene amplification. What I've shown you also is the work of Repair Therapeutics, uh, which developed our, our RP6306, which is a selective, orally bioavailable first-in-class pk one inhibitor. And RP6306 is, uh, has now entered phase one clinical trial, as uh, uh, Dr. Tim Yap uh, will discuss uh, uh, in this uh, presentation. Uh, so I also need to mention that this work uh, is uh, expanded and, and, and really elaborated in a preprint uh, listed below. So this work uh, was uh, led by two fantastic individuals, uh, Jordan Young and Dave Gallo. Uh, both of them started uh, this work in my lab and have now uh, joined uh, Repair Therapeutics. And also this was a very uh, fun uh, collaboration uh, with Repair Therapeutics. The work in my lab uh, was supported uh, by these uh, funding agencies. Thank you very much.